today to Freedom Baptist Church. You know what today is? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. I've got a mini palm here. Thank you, Brother Bennett. I had that in my pocket and somebody said after my Wednesday night message, I better get that out or clarify what that was. And if you, if you missed the Wednesday night message, I won't say any more about it. But anyhow, we appreciate you being out this morning. And I tell you what, we've had a great, great week. We are going to be in that church next Sunday. Yeah. And man, we're excited about that. We're excited about that. Been a lot of work going on this week. The electricians have, have basically finished up. Todd and Lorena got the sound up and going. And uh, man, going to get all the, all the rest of the audio and the video and everything. But Pastor Brooks is coming tonight. And then you're all going to work on it tomorrow. And, uh, man, we just got lots going on. It's going to be a big week. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. So thank you for being here today. And, uh, Connie, it's so good to have you, Bill and Marge's friend. Thank you for coming out today. God bless you. And she just lost her husband not long ago, so pray for Miss Connie. But thank you for being with us today. And then Christy's back there. Christy, that's, that's Travis's mom. Good to have you with us this morning. God bless you. God bless you. And then where's Brian? Where's Brian? I can't find him. Where is Brian? Oh, he's, he's out here. But Brian and Mary are here and their three kids. And Brian owns the electrical company that's been doing our work. Awesome. And uh, Hey, Mary, that's PLC Electric, right? And uh, I want to give a shout out. You said, I don't know if I do that in church. Well, I am. I told Brian and Mary outside that, man, these guys, his crew, his team, they've been so good to us. Here he comes right now. Come up here a minute, man. He's been so good. If you need any electrical work done, this is the guy to call, PLC Electrical. Thank, Thank you, buddy. You, Thank, you. Thank you. And, uh, man, he's out in church with us this morning, and Mary and the three kids, what a blessing. What a blessing. We appreciate everybody that's out this morning. Well, we're going to have a good time this morning. I can already tell it. But like I said, it's Palm Sunday, and uh, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But, uh, man, let's get ready. This is our last Sunday in the building here. Yeah. So, man, I don't know where to shout and rejoice and, and thank God that we've been here. But I tell you what, we're ready to move on. Amen? Amen. And, man, I appreciate that. And let me see who that's coming. I heard Janae. Here comes another one of the electrical men right there, Josh. Josh has been up there working. And man, I tell you what, these electricians, they said they'd be here today and they're showing up. 
and I appreciate them. But man, it's been a great, great week. And we certainly thank God for everybody. There's no way I could thank everybody for everything you've done. But man, I tell you what, it's been great. And I do want to give a shout out to John. Where's John? John, raise your hand up back there. John. John, raise your hand up. He won't raise his hand up. John has just taken that job on up there and done everything that needs to be done. You know, you know what I like about it? If I just think something, he's right on it, man, and trying to get it fixed. And John, thank you so much. There's no way we could ever pay him. And of course, he's had his assistant up there, Miss Pat. But we appreciate them. Appreciate everybody that's done everything. And uh, Todd and Lorena worked Thursday, Friday, last night. They stayed with the electrician. What time y'all finish up in the morning, Brian? What time? 1.30. 1.30. So you got out there a little earlier than what you thought. But, uh, man, they stayed. And then Todd and Lorena up there and got sound. The sound is working in the new building. And uh, I told somebody, that new board is so nice, it looks like a cockpit out of an airplane. And all you got to do is punch your button, and it just, it just buttons begin to move and reset itself. So we're going to have a good time. I'm excited. Can you tell Brother Bill, come on, better get me down. We stand for our pledges. The American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. To our Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Okay. We're going to be singing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Man. What a wonderful change in my life has been brought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Lights of joy are my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. I have caused him in my wandering and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into
me see, where are my youngins this morning? Where are my youngins? Well, I understand some people got some money to put in the, put in the, the building fund this morning. Where's all the money? They took it out and emptied it and counted it. All right, here we go. I, I better hold this. Just drop a bag and all in. That way you won't have to, you won't have to take your time to do it. Drop. Oh, my goodness. Why are we going to be able to pay our bills now? Wow, what a blessing. Look at that. Nico, my man, what's happening, son? Huh? You got some? Man, look at that. Wow, good thing we emptied that out. Woo, are those $1,000 bills? Just drop it all in there. Wow, I love that. Anybody else got any? Man, oh man. Wow. I don't know if I can carry that or not, guys. Wow. Wow. Anybody else got any? Oh, come on. Surely you got more than that. Huh? Is that good? Everybody good? Everybody got their money in there? Raise your hand you don't. I want to get that away from here. That's heavy, isn't it? Wow. Well, thank you guys for doing that. And contributing to the building fund. Wow. You know, next Sunday, next Sunday's Resurrection Sunday, and we're going to be in the new building. And, man, I can't wait for you guys to gather around, and we'll have, have carpet to sit on and all that stuff. But, man, hey, invite your family and your friends out. What are we going to do after church next week? Oh, we're going to An egg hunt. An Easter egg hunt right up on the property. So you be sure and come out and bring it. What are you? What are you? What are you gonna put your eggs in? A basket, a bag, or what? A basket. A basket. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, well, listen. Let me have that. If you, it, he's gonna put his egg in that. So, so if it man, uh, you better find the right egg if you gonna put it in that. That one. That's what I'm thinking. Well, let me tell you what. Today is Palm Sunday. Nico, what is Palm Sunday? I thought if Nico's here, he probably knows. What is Palm Sunday? What? My history, man, you don't know what, does anybody know what Palm Sunday is? What is it, bro? I think it's when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And they call that the triumphal entry. That's when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and then the next week, we call it Holy Week. We're going into the crucifixion, going into the resurrection next Sunday. And let me give a couple of you... Some, some, of these, somebody, some of these bigger kids, take one, take one, take one. I don't want these little fellows out. They have to like, put your eyes out. <laughs> Let me tell you what they did with these. Oh. Yeah. I knew we were going to be in trouble. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> anybody have any back there? Miles? Pass a couple of those out back through there. Christopher, pass one out right there. All right, you got one? Look here what they did. What? No, no, that's not what they did. You know what they did? When Jesus was coming through, they put these in the way and the donkey rode on them and they waved them. You know what palm leaves were a symbol of back then? Uh, air. Victory. And they cried. You know what Hosanna means? Save us. And when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem, they were, everybody wave the palm branch. Wave it. Wave. Come on, wave that thing. And they said, Jesus, save us. Let me see if you can say it. Say it, say it with me. Jesus. Just save us. And you know what? In just a few days, they were crying, crucify him. It didn't take long to change their mind, did it? So you remember today, Palm Sunday's today. The second, let me have that. Just like being back in school. Let me have that. <laughs> Palm Sunday is the second greatest Sunday in Christianity. What's the first Sunday? What's the number one Sunday that we would celebrate in Christianity? When he arose. Resurrection. So we're going to be doing that next week. Have a great day. Have a great week. And come next week to the new building. You think y'all can find it? All right, let me have those palm. Let me have those. Don't take them with you. You'll be, let me have those. You'll be putting your eyeballs out. Be putting your eyeballs out. You been there? Don't put somebody's eyes out.
Let's stand one more time. Okay? Stretch our legs and everything for this sermon. This is at the cross. Thank you for coming out. I tell you what, those kids have me a little bit worried with those palm leaves. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I didn't know if they were going to get me or get themselves, but uh, wow. Isn't it a blessing? Saying, Brian, your kids go? Did they, did they ease out and go with them? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, kids went up, new kids went over. So, man, that's great. We had a good crowd out. But we appreciate everybody, everybody being out. We're going to get ready to go to prayer this morning. Again, pray as we enter into this week and, you know, Holy Week is starting, Palm Sunday today. Think about what happened almost 2,000 years ago. Let this week sink down deep, deep, deep into your soul and realize what Jesus did. And then next Sunday, man, Resurrection Sunday. Don't forget we'll be having a sunrise service at 7 o'clock at the new building. And BYOC, which means what? Bring your own chair. But so we'll have some chairs up there, but bring a lawn chair if you want to be comfortable. And we're going to be starting at about 7 o'clock, but thank you for that. And we'll have something to eat, we'll have something to eat at the end of that, so that'll be great. Major's going to be preaching a sunrise service. And, uh, man, we're looking forward to that. And then 1030 will be our first service. Uh, Pastor Brooks will be there and Miss Diane will be there. Pastor Canuck and T- Tyna will be there. And we're just excited about that. Invite your family and friends to come out. And then next Sunday night, we've got a what? How many people have been to a wedding on Easter? I haven't either, but we're getting ready to have one. And uh, we're going to have a wedding. Travis and Ashley are getting married next Sunday night on Easter Sunday night. And uh, they're going to have a mini sermon and then the wedding. And and I don't know who's going to preach it. I don't know who's going to preach that mini sermon, but... uh, and then we're going to have a little reception out there at the new church. So that ought to be an exciting time. I'm so excited about that. And, uh, you know, I, I, that just, just that they want to do the right thing and do what's right. Amen. And got saved and rededicated. And, man, what a blessing they are. Amen. So, uh, And then I'm planning on maybe baptizing the Sunday after that. Would it be all right with you, Travis? Yes, yes. Boy, I love that, don't you? Amen. You know, there are people you can't hardly get them in the water hole after they say they got saved. Right. And, man, I, I, there's a guy. He, hey, whatever it is, that's what I want to do. And, man, I appreciate that. So, John, we'll plan on baptizing probably the week after Easter if we can. Up there, if not, we'll take our hog trough and use it. Amen. Which reminded me, I just pray for Randy and Mary Perry. They're, they're in revival this week at Hog Swamp Baptist Church. 
And I said, man, I love that. I love that name. Hog Swamp Baptist Church up in North Carolina. But man, what a name. Also pray for all those in the tornadoes that we had, you know, they came through Little Rock, Arkansas uh, the other night again. Pastor Brooks, that's where they came from. And pray for all those people, the people that have died and passed away and homeless. Pray for Pastor Randy, who's home now. And boy, he still needs a lot of prayer. Kevin's nephew, uh, they've taken him off, the, off life support. Be with him and his family. Be with Neil Van Hoos, Evelyn's uh, nephew. Bill's having his procedure on Thursday. Thursday. I've been saying Tuesday. I don't know why. But uh, procedure on Thursday. And pray for them. Then their sister, Barb, and uh, Shirley's sister, has lung cancer, continue to pray for her and her brother Mike. Shirley Snyder has bronchitis. Bobby Batco up in Cle up, uh, Pennsylvania goes to Cleveland Clinic uh, on the 11th. And then Eddie's surgery is on Tuesday. So we've got to get all the work we can out of him tomorrow. <laughs> so, hey, you dress like me today. And man, I like that. So, and then Karen Boyd, that's uh, the Karen and Chris from the campground, her dad. Uh, is waiting to have cancer surgery, and boy, what a blessing it was to meet Chris and Karen. Just love them. Then Greg Benatter, that's Lydia Taylor's brothers in the hospital. Shirley and Cliff's friend, uh, Ronnie Douglas, is having trouble with his platelet count. And then continue to remember Margie's family. Her sister passed away. Tony Holland is in ICU with blood clots. So let's just pray that we have a, a great service today and that God will bless, and, and we'll just see everything. God will work in a great way. I meant to say that. <laughs> Absolutely. The First Lady is back in the service today. And uh, man, it's a blessing to have her back. And we appreciate her being here. But God bless her heart. She, she, is, she is much better. Uh, you know, it takes her a long time to get over anything. But we're glad she is back in church. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Major, you got time to come and pray for us this morning? morning. Great to see everybody out this morning. i got a great looking crowd and great to have our visitors out with us. What a blessing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with thankful hearts, dear Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, dear Lord, on this beautiful Sunday morning, dear Lord, as we, uh, as we remember, Lord, as we, as we celebrate the, the day, Lord, that you came in, your triumphal entry, dear Lord, into Jerusalem, Father. And, uh, and as, as Dad talked about this morning with the kids, dear Lord, they just waved the palm branches and laid them down, dear Lord, for, for you to ride on, Father, and the donkey, dear Lord. And we just thank you for that, Lord, as they shouted, Hosanna, to save us, dear Lord. And that's exactly what you did, Lord. You saved us. Lord, you saved us from an eternity in hell, dear Lord, so that we could be with you forever in heaven, dear Lord. And we thank you for that, dear Lord. And as we go through this week, Father, and help us to focus on you, dear Lord, as uh, we know that uh, the crowd was fickle, dear Lord, even though the, they, they loved you today and a few days, Lord, they turned their back on you, Father, and they, they said crucify you, dear Lord, and, and as we celebrate on Good Friday, Father, and then help us to know that that's not the end, Father, help us know that Easter, Easter morning, Resurrection Sunday, Lord, that you rose again, Father, and that you live forever, dear Lord, so you can be the Lord and Savior of our lives, so we can be forever with you in heaven, Lord. We praise you for that, Lord. Lord, we want to lift up the service today, Lord. Pray for, pray for Dad, Lord. Lord, ask that you to anoint his mouth, Father, and fill him with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Pray that if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, Father, anybody that's away from you, pray that they would come to you for it's everlasting too late, dear Lord, whether they're here in the building or at FBC Clo or watching online, dear Lord. Pray that today would be the day of salvation. Pray for old-time conviction, Lord. Lord, just want to pray for the singing, dear Lord, for the special singings coming up, dear Lord, and we just thank you for that, Lord. I want to pray for the children's church, be with the Roxanne and my babies over there, if those precious kids, Lord, pray that they would continue to get saved whenever they're ready, dear Lord, and, and make you the Lord and Savior of their life, Father. We just thank you. Lord, we want to lift up the prayer list. Lord, so many names on there, so many that, that got called out, dear Lord. People that need you, Father. People that need to know you. People that need a healing touch. Lord, people that need comforted. Lord, ask you should reach down and touch their knees, dear Lord. And just want to praise you, dear Lord. And thank you that mom's able to be back with us this morning. What a blessing to have her back in the service, dear Lord, that she's doing better. Lord, she still needs she still needs your healing touch, dear Lord. But thank you that she's feeling like coming out and she's able to be with us, dear Lord. Lord, I want to pray for America. Lord, our nation's in bad shape. Lord, pray that she would turn back to you, Father. Pray for revival, Lord. Pray that you'd start with revival. We might not be able to have 
national revival, Lord, but pray that you would start in me, dear Lord, and start in my family and start in this church, Lord, to help us to get out, Lord, to a lost and dying world, Lord. Help us to, to have an evangelistic mindset, dear Lord, to get out and tell the world about you, Lord, because they're searching for answers, dear Lord, and we have the answer. Lord, the answer's not in a, a, a bottle of beer or a bottle of liquor, dear Lord, or a crack pipe or anything like that. Lord, the answer is in a personal relationship with you, Father, and help us to get out there and tell people boldly about that, Father, and we just praise you and thank you for all you've done for us. Lord, forgive us where we failed you. Lord, nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that your will be done. In the holy, sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Of all the terrible things that Jesus had to endure, he walked out of that tomb. And I know he lives today because he lives within my heart. He's still living. been many years gone by since my Lord was crucified. There have been many days that it's gone since God's grace has been made known. And oh, the precious blood that There's your key, the mom did say, as he played and died that day. Then they laid him in the tomb, lying there in death's dark gloom. question is, is he living in your heart? Amen. Might be the best question to ask today. Amen. Amen. 
Well, you got your Bible, open up to the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. Again, let me say what a blessing it is to see everybody out and our visitors. We appreciate them being out so much today. And I know that Christy likes old-time Christianity. And uh, that's Travis's mom, so Amen. she ought to be happy today. Amen? Amen. The rest of you I don't know about. But uh, we're, we're so glad to have all of you here this morning. Don't forget now, tomorrow we'll be doing some cleaning and moving. Tuesday, the, the uh, carpet cleaner is coming, and then Wednesday, they'll be moving out, moving a little bit of stuff. But Thursday, if you can help, we'll be moving a lot of this stuff, not all of it, just what we need to get into the new building and have our first service there, and then we'll have time to get everything cleaned up after that. But if you can help with that, we'd be glad to help you. Thursday and Friday is going to be two big days, and hopefully by Saturday... We have most of the things ready and set up and ready to go. I told Todd the other night, I said, Todd, let's not be at Saturday night making sure everything's okay. He said the sound will be on after a while. And, man, he's got that set up and ready to go. So what a blessing that is. Amen? All right. Got your Bible. Matthew chapter number 21. Matthew chapter number 21. I found out this morning why I wear those fishing shirts now. My belly's gotten so big I can't keep my shirt tail in. Can I just go ahead and pull that shirt tail out this morning? It's not a fishing shirt, but it's, I guess I'm just going to have to do it. Anyway. I'm going to take this tie off. Here it is Palm Sunday, and I'm just making a mess of things. And uh, man, oh man, I bet y'all have that fishing shirt on tonight, what you say. That looks terrible. That My wife will be on me after a while. My wife will be on me after a while. So, man, you look like, well, I won't say what I look like. <laughs> I just saw myself on the, on the camera there. People online will be going, Connie, you're probably not used to people like me, but keep coming. You'll get used to it. Amen? All right, Matthew chapter number 21. I'm going to have to read a few verses this morning. I don't like to read a lot, but I'm going to have to this morning to kind of get to picture. Matthew 21, listen to what it says. Are you there? Amen. Don't forget tonight, 6 o'clock, final thoughts. On the seven churches. We, tr we tried that last Sunday night and got one church. So I, we only got six more to go. But uh, I don't know if we can get them all in tonight. Anybody want to, anybody, how many people think I can get all six churches in tonight? Wow, you got more faith in me than I do. Matthew chapter number 21, verse number one. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage under the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. Isn't it amazing that God had everything preordained and preplanned? That that donkey would be in the right place at the right time. And Jesus said, there'll be a donkey tied over there. Go over and get him. Sure enough, they went and there he was. Yeah. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and setting upon an ass and a colt, the foal of an ass prophesied a long time ago that Jesus would make that triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, that's always a good thing, and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. Now listen, pay attention, we're down to verse number 8. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down, Others cut down, had to take off the camera man. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God. 
and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. Isn't it amazing the religious crowd? Think about that. The religious folks are still the ones upset today. Bible-believing Christianity has more trouble from the religious crowd than it does from the lost crowd. And the religious folks of the day said, we don't want to hear that. And they were sore displeased. And listen to what Jesus said. And said unto them, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. And he left them and went out of the city and he lodged there. Wow. I want to preach this morning on this thought, and I'm not, I won't keep you over 2 o'clock today probably, and uh, so just hang on. But I want to preach on this thought, the big picture. The big picture. So let me ask you a question. Do you see the big picture in life? I mean, the, you, know, you know what most people see? Yep. Little narrow perspective. All they see is what's right in front of them. They, they just see the small picture. Thank God I'm going to say I got saved and I see the big picture. I know what life is all about. Amen. Amen. These people in the scriptures this morning, they only saw the small picture. And I'm going to talk about that. They didn't see the big picture because the big picture, man, listen, if you've never seen the big picture, I hope that today before you leave here that you say, man, I see it, preacher. I know what you're talking about. Let me tell you what Hosanna means. Hosanna, when Jesus came into town on that donkey and they took their clothes and, and laid them in the street, put them on the donkey, they put palm branches down in the way and they begin to wave those palm branches. I told the kids that was a symbol of victory. You know what Hosanna means? It's a plea for salvation. Lord, save us. Lord, save us. It's also a word for praise. Hosanna. Hosanna. Praise the Lord. We also should be praying. So I want to say to you this morning, welcome to Palm Sunday. As I've said a couple of times, this is the greatest Sunday outside of the resurrection that's in the history of Christianity. The only Sunday more important will be next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So let me go ahead and invite you back to our new building and our brand new service in the brand new building. And man, I hope that you'll make plans on being there. Amen. I hope we get all these kids and bring all these youngins and have, and have like hundreds, we got hundreds of, it looks like hundreds of Easter eggs out there. I don't know how many we have, but it looks like hundreds of them. And we'll have a great day and remember that. But you know, I, I always tell this story and I don't mean to be mean when I tell this. A few years ago when I wasn't pastoring, I would get out from behind the pulpit, but man, I look so bad with my shirt tail out. I'm going to stay locked up here maybe. A few years ago when I wasn't pastoring, we were going to a church, and I won't call any names, and two years in a row, Palm Sunday came by, and the pastor didn't say anything, and I thought, well, that's strange. Next year went by, and Palm Sunday came by, and nothing was mentioned about Palm Sunday, nothing was said about that, so going out the door, I shook his hand, and I said, hey, pastor, happy Palm Sunday. I said, today's Palm Sunday. You said, how'd that go over? I don't know. I don't know how it went over. don't really care. But I think that we ought to capitalize on every opportunity we have. This is the second holiest Sunday in the history of Christianity. And we ought to be waving our palm branches. And we ought to be saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. Wow. So I want to take advantage of it. Let me tell you in case you don't know. Today's Palm Sunday. Amen. 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 I had one of my preacher buddies had told me earlier in the week what he was preaching on. I said, man, that's not a Palm Sunday sermon. I said, man, I said, would you at least say Palm Sunday somewhere in the introduction? He sent me a message this morning. He said, I've changed my sermon. And I thought, man, that's great. Amen. So in, in, Palm Sunday is important. You said, what really, what really is it? Well, number one, it's when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. 
prophesied years ago in the Old Testament that Jesus would come and the king would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. It was prophesied and guess what? Everything that the Bible says happens to a T. It's the Sunday before resurrection. As you go through this week, I hope you'll think about what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. What he went through, the beating, the suffering, the shame, the spitting, the scourging, the beating, the slapping, the mocking that he went through that you and I might be able to be saved. Amen. And man, you think about that. And it's also the start of Holy Week. So man, this is, this is an event that was etched in stone in eternity past. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, the Bible talks about that Jesus stood as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. It was the plan of God way back yonder before there was anything or anybody that Jesus would die for the sins of the world. Amen? Yes. Now I want to talk about that word today that we read in the scripture today. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna literally means I beg you to save or deliver us. I want to give you three thoughts, and that'll be all I want to give you this morning. If I get through with them, it'll be a blessing. Amen. Number one, Hosanna. Hosanna, please save us. Now, remember what's the title of my sermon? Anybody remember? The big picture. When I think about the multitudes that were saying, Hosanna, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and yelling, Hosanna, and they were waving their palm branches and putting them on the street, and Jesus was coming by, and they were waving those palm branches, and they were saying, Hosanna, Lord, save us. You know what the problem was? They didn't see the big picture. Oh, I'm going to have to get out from behind here. Is it all right? Listen, hey, listen, they didn't see the big picture. You know what they saw? You know what they, you know what they were wanting the Lord to save them from? The Roman Empire. That's what they thought. Man, they were, they were being oppressed. They were being beaten up on because the Roman Empire was in charge. And they thought, here comes Jesus. He's come to take over. He's going to defeat the Roman Empire. And they were saying, Lord, save us. I want to tell you, they only saw the little picture. There was a picture much bigger than that. There was a plan of God out yonder that he wasn't coming to save them from the Roman Empire, but to save them from their sins. You know, isn't that, isn't that the way so many people are? Yes. They think Jesus is going, you know, people pray. By the way, do unsaved people pray? Yeah. You better believe they pray. <laughs> Let trouble come. Yep. Let heartache come. Let tragedy come. Right. And boy, they'll call on God. Yep. Amen. You don't, hey, you don't find very many atheists in a foxhole. That's right. You don't find very many atheists up there at the ICU unit. You don't find very many atheists laying in there in the cancer ward just about ready to leave this world. I want to tell you because there comes a time when you realize, hey, there is a God in heaven. You know what the problem is? We don't see the big picture. Those disciples and those people in the street, they're waving palm leaves and saying, Lord, save us. And they were wanting to save from the Roman Empire. Jesus was coming to save them from something bigger than the Roman Empire. He was coming to save them from Satan, from sin, from self, from hell, and give them a chance to be saved for eternity. Wow. People haven't changed much in the last 2,000 years, have they? You're talking about missing the big picture. They didn't see it. They saw that little picture. And you know what I thought about that, man? When you think about that, they wanted to be saved from the Roman Empire. And when you think about that, that's the way people are today. They're looking for Jesus to save them from some temporary problem. Amen? Amen. I mean, listen, you, hey, your wife or your husband gets sick, hey, Lord, take care of that. The job doesn't go just right, Lord, take care of that. Relationship issues go south, Lord, take care of that. Lord, I need a better job, Lord, take care of that. You know what you're doing? You're only looking at the small picture. You're not seeing the great big perspective out there that God wants to do something better than just save you from those things. He wants to save your soul. Yes, amen. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died. Yet so many people, so many people, I think about the world out yonder. I think about my friends, my family, your friends, your family. Maybe people that might be here this morning, all they see is that little tiny picture. They don't see the big picture, man, that Jesus wants to save your soul. I wasn't there when they crucified the Lord. I wasn't there when he rose from the dead. But I was there 
when he saved my soul. And I'm going to tell you what the greatest miracle. Hey, hey, Travis, I don't know about you, but you and I got something in common. The greatest miracle that could ever happen. Listen, not that somebody rise up from the dead. Not that somebody get cured from cancer. Not that somebody get a new job. The greatest miracle that ever happened is the day that I got saved. And I want to tell you what. You say, what happened? There was a mini resurrection that took part in my heart. I was lost and on my way to hell. And when I opened up, my heart. Man, listen, the Spirit of God came in and I was born again. Amen. He said, I don't know what that born again stuff is. I'm going to be pumped down to my... I don't have a t-shirt on here in a minute. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you something. If all you see is that little tiny thing, that little picture out there and you're just seeing for the next 20 or 30 or 40... Hey, listen, I'm 60 some years old. And I got there a lot faster than what I thought I'd get there. Pardon me. Our lives are about over. Amen it. But I'm going to tell you what. For you young whippersnappers out yonder, you'll soon be closing in on that too. I got, I got here a lot faster than what I thought. And you know what most people do? You know what they think? Lord, how can I have a better life now? How can I get everything I need now? Thank God. Listen, I was brought up in an, hey, Miss Christy, I was brought up in an old time, old fashioned Baptist church that believed in shucking the corn and preaching the gospel and pointing that big long finger at you and telling you, if you don't get saved, you're going to die and go to hell. And thank God the Holy Ghost of God spoke to me and made me realize, hey, I need to be saved. And you know what? Hey, just like you, Travis, you saw the bigger picture. You saw what life saw all about and I feel so sad for people today young folks old folks middle aged folks that's going through life and life is just swiftly passing by and they're just living for the here and now I want to tell you if you're just living for the here and now you're missing out on the blessings of God there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun amen can I tell you something this morning let me just tell you let me just go ahead and cap this off right here with this Satan doesn't want you to see the big picture Amen. He doesn't want you to see there's an eternity. He wants you to think this is all there is. Live and get every get it all now. Get, grab everything you can now. What about eternity out yonder? You were born and you're here for a reason, and you will live on somewhere for eternity. That'll all be enough because everybody hit an altar right there this morning. You know what, Satan? Satan will do anything he can to keep you from seeing the big picture. Well, you were hurt. So have I been hurt. You've had sorrow. So have I. You've had death come into your family. So have I. You've had disappointment. So have I. Well, I had a bad past. So have I. Well, I don't know if I had it. I better take that back. I didn't t- had too bad of a past. Tell by looking at me, I'm, I'm big as a horse just about. Hey, but you know what? God's been good to me. Amen. But, you know, we use all these. You know what saints say? You know, you, well, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You, you, you remember what you've been through. Remember, you had, a bad, you had a bad experience when you were a child. Mom and daddy weren't good to you. Maybe something happened. You know what, you know what Satan, well, you got a good job. You don't, you, don't get, you don't get saved and jeopardize that. Maybe you don't have a job at all. You don't want to jeopardize that. Satan will use anybody or anything to keep that little old picture so that you can't see that great big picture out yonder because when you begin to really see, hey, I'm going to go back and preach. Christy, can I preach on Travis again? Travis came, what was it, three Sundays ago. Hadn't been, I don't know if he'd ever been to church in years and years and years. Came and sat right back yonder. Actually had hadn't been to church in 13 years and I'm going to tell you what there was a grandpa and a grandma that had been praying for them that God would get a hold of their heart and I'm sure that Christy was praying that God would get a hold of their hearts and here he come big old boy big enough to eat hay come busting through that door on that Sunday morning and son God just shook him and rattled his cage I don't know if it was the first time. I don't know what it was. But I'm going to tell you something happened that day that he realized he needed to be saved. Amen. I got home and I sent him a text and thanked him for being here. Well, we just began to text back and forth. I said, man, that guy likes to talk. And we're just texting. He said, I'll see you tonight. Now, you know it's one thing to come on Sunday morning. You can't even get church folk to come back out on Sunday night. And I didn't mean to get on you. 
Hey, you can't even get church folks to come back out on Sunday night. Travis said, I'll see you Sunday night. Come back out on Sunday night. Just so happened the way it was on those seven churches in Revelation. Church number seven, the Laodicean church. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. I stood right here and watched him. I kept an eye on him. And boy, I tell you, God got a hold of him. He didn't walk the aisle that night because Ashley had the baby out yonder in the nursery. And he walked out and said, hey. He said, listen, Jesus. Jesus is knocking at my heart's door. And I, tell you, I just went out there and said, well, man, say, hey, listen, that's, you can't beat that. Even a blind squirrel can find a nut every now and then. I went out there and, man, listen, he got saved. Ashley rededicated. Man, they ain't missed a service. They ain't missed a service. Going to be, hey, listen, going to get married next Easter. Man, listen, I can't wait to preach a mini sermon on that on Sunday night. And man, about why they're going to get married. I can't hardly wait for that. And then we're going to baptize him in that water hole come the following Sunday. I thank God that God still works in the hearts of the people. And I tell you what, he got a pretty good job. He got a good family. But I tell you what, all of a sudden something happened. He quit seeing that little old picture and he began to see things in the big picture. Amen. 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 Satan will give you a thousand reasons why you can't see the big picture. Don't allow Satan to blind you. There are multitudes of people went up down the street after the day that are blinded to the things of God. The Bible said, in whom the God of this world, little g, Talking about Satan has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the gospel should shine unto them and they be saved. I believe God still speaks to people's hearts. Amen. Amen. I believe God's still in the saving business. Amen. Point number two. I'm a mess. Point number two. I've had a concussion, I think. Point number two. Point number two, not only Hosanna, please save us. Hosanna, praise to the Savior. I'm going to just say this this morning. I'm going I'm to ruffle everybody in here. You'll be, hey, the hair will be up on your back by the time I get off of this point like an old cat, like an old dog just bowed up, man, just bristled up, ready to get mad. I'm going to tell you what, listen. Hey, listen, if you could see the big picture and just say, Lord, have mercy. We'd all be choo-chooing around this church this morning. We'd all put our hands up and say, thank God. Thank God I've been saved. But you know what? We just see the little picture. We don't see the big picture. Amen. You know what, Hosanna? It's also a, a, a word for praise, the praise to the Savior. Amen. Thank God. Hey, listen. Thank God for you. My wife's been out of church two weeks. We're glad she's back. Thank God for your health. Thank God for your relationship. Thank God for your job. But listen, there's something bigger than that. Thank God that I've been saved. Amen. You see the big picture? Most people just look at the little picture. I don't know about you, but we've got reason to rejoice. You go down here and get happy over a football game. I ain't got no problem with that. You go down here and get you a big deer, I ain't got no problem with that. You go out here and catch you a big bass, a big crop, I don't have any problem with that. But why I got a problem when we can't get happy over what Jesus has done for us, that Jesus has saved our soul. Amen. The Bible says, man, in Psalm 107, four times in that chapter, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Praise the Lord. Man, I want to tell you, man, listen. Let the redeemed, Psalm 107 too. Maybe it's not four times in that chapter. But let the redeemed of the Lord yes. say so. Amen. If you're saved, you ought to say so. Amen. You ought to tell somebody. Right. Satan doesn't want you to tell anybody. You tell somebody, somebody might want to get saved. Somebody might want to come to church. Somebody might want to start living for Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
I'll tell you what we ought to do. Instead of saying, instead of saying that little tiny picture, we ought to say the big picture. We ought to say, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross at Calvary. Thank you for raising again the third day. Thank you that you saved my soul. Man, listen, I don't know about you. You say, well, listen, things aren't that good in my life. I'm going to tell you what, you're above ground today. You've got breath in your body. You've got health to be out here. I'll tell you what, there are a lot of people that trade places with you today. Amen. And not even ask a question. I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good this morning. Amen. 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 Luke 19, cha- Luke chapter 19. Listen, same story, different, uh, different writer. Luke 19. Let me read you a couple verses. Verse number 38, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, those are religious folk. From among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Man, listen, there was a group of people standing there praising God and getting happy about it. And the religious folks said, you know what? Hey, you ought to cause them to be quiet. They ought not say anything. They ought to hold their peace. They ought not do anything. We don't want anybody making any noise. We want to go to a church where it's dry and dead and formal and everybody just sits there and goes. No. I don't go where there's some life. I want to go to where some passion. I want to go where people are excited about being saved. Amen. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said, verse number 40. And he answered and said to them, I tell you that, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. You know what Jesus said to that religious crowd? You want me to rebuke my disciples? You want me to rebuke and say something to these people that's praising the Lord and thanking me? You want me to say something to them? I'll tell you what will happen if these folks don't say anything. The stones yonder will cry out. I don't know about you. I don't want no stone crying out for me. I don't want some stone to open up its mouth and begin to say glory to God in the highest. I want to do my part and say thank you Jesus for saving me. That's the big picture. That's the big picture, man, is thanking God. I don't want any stones crying out for me. Psalm 107, verse 8 says, Praise the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Four times. Psalm 107, 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Psalm 107, 21. 21 oh, that men would praise the Lord. Psalm 107, 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Let me just say, I think men ought to praise the Lord. Amen. What well, just take them? Just put our hands up three times. Praise the Lord. Come on, get them up. Get them up. Get them up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, you ought to get that antenna up yonder every now and then. It's like an antenna. Those old antennas that used to have to go up. Remember what? I tell you, I'm going to get on this right here. Remember when you to go up on the hill sometime and twist that antenna or get up on the roof and twist that antenna because it had lost signal. I'll tell you what's wrong with a lot of folks. You've lost signal with the Lord. Let me get on your roof. Let me rattle your cage a minute. Let me work that antenna. I used to hunt with a guy, man. I, he was like a daddy to me. He had a, he had a cable. He had up on top of the hill. Y'all don't know what hills are, you flatlanders down here. We got hills and mountains up yonder in the north country. And he had up on top of his hill. You know what I'm talking about? Had one of those big old antennas up yonder standing up on the hill. Big old cable run down all the way down, all the way down across the field and up into the house. Get up and had to get just like, hey, just had to spread out along the way. Turn it a little bit to the right. Turn it a little bit to the left. Ho, ho, wait a minute, there it is. You remember those days? That's what, for you young folks, that's the way you used to get TV. Most of these young folks don't know anything about that. Push your button, if it doesn't come on, they say, I don't know what to do. What we used to have, turn that antenna. Something that happened and you had lost signal with the satellite. You know what's wrong with most Christian people today? (laughs) You want me to go ahead and say it? They have lost signal with the Savior. Man, listen, if you can say it and you never get happy, you don't ever get excited. It may be in the recesses of your home. It might be while you're driving down the road. It might be during your prayer time. But there ought to be a time when you get happy and thank God, thank God that I've been saved. I'm not on my way to hell. I've been saved out of the pits of hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to tell you what, that's what we ought to get excited about and praise God that's what we ought to get excited about man see the big picture amen you feeling good now Did I just jump up in that chair 
I hope I didn't call Bennett to have a heart attack. <laughs> Bennett loves me. He would have caught me. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You have anything? To, do you have anything? Even if you're not saved, surely to God you can look around. Surely to God you can look around and say, I got something Amen. that I need to be thankful for. Amen. More or less all the rest of us that are saved. God help you if you can sit there. I ought to be able to just point you out and you ought to just pop up and say, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I've been saved. I'm thankful. You ought to, you ought to have said, no, no, no. We could probably point on and say people that probably could stand up and say, I'm thankful for this or that. Amen. And then Christians, I'm looking for my hanky. Wipe the sweat for just a minute. Hey, this old time church right here, my buddy. Thank you for coming. Amen. Point number three, and we're going to go home. Point number one, Hosanna, plea to save us. Point number two, Hosanna. Wow. Praise to the Savior. Amen. Point number three, Hosanna. Pray for the soon coming Savior. Amen. 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 Listen, I don't know if you even know it or not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me rattle your cage a minute. Let me just, just shake you a minute. I don't know if you see the big picture or not. You say, what's going on out there in the political world? What's going on out there in the geopolitical world? What's going on out there with all these countries? What's going on out there? Why is everything so crazy? Let me just tell you why. Jesus is getting ready to make his return. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo, that ought to put a shout. That ought to put a shout on a dry Baptist. That Jesus Christ is soon Amen. getting ready to sweep down and to rapture the church and take us out of here before all hell breaks loose on, loose on earth. Amen. You know what I pray? You know what I pray? I pray even so come Lord Jesus. Man, I'd love to have a service or two in that new building, but I got to tell you, hey, if he came today, I wouldn't be disappointed. If we, hey, I'll leave that new building to you that's left behind, and you do what you want to with it. I'm going on to heaven. Amen. Revelation twenty two twenty. You ready? Revelation twenty two twenty. This is next to the last verse in the Bible. Revelation 22, 21 is the last verse in the Bible. Revelation 22, 20. He which testifieth these things, that's talking about Jesus, saith, surely, 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 I come quickly. Hey, in the last book, of the last chapter, of the next to the last verse, of the last promise in the Bible. You know what the last promise that Jesus left us? You know what he said? Hey, Kevin, he said, surely I come quickly. Amen. And you know what John said? John was standing there. Can you imagine? I'm about to get happy. John getting that revelation from Jesus and Jesus standing there telling John, giving him everything to write down and he's getting ready to put the final close. You know, by the way, the last words of a man are important words. Right. Go back and read what some of the people said on their deathbed, their dying words. The last words we have recorded of Jesus. Surely, I come quickly. You know, what, you know what John said? John started the way we fin finish. John didn't end, he, he didn't end up with amen. He said, amen. amen. You know what amen means? It means you agree. Yeah. You affirm. You're in agreement with that. He said, amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you, listen, when you think about it, you might not even realize it. Listen, there's a day out yonder in your future saved or lost Jesus is coming back and if you're not saved you've got to stand and give an account to Jesus of why you did not get saved you say well I'll just skip out I'm just going I'll just take a pass I just won't show up there's an appointment amen 
You know how it is when you got a doctor's appointment? And they'll call a few days before. Just call and let you know you got an appointment coming up. Okay, thank you. Day before, got an appointment, don't miss it. The Holy Ghost of God. Yep. Right there's a man right there, the Holy Ghost of God, rang his chimes a couple weeks ago right. and said, you got an appointment coming up. Amen. Every one of us got an appointment coming up. Yep. The Bible says, as, is it, as it is appointed right. unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Amen. You see the big picture? Or you're still looking through that little narrow vision, right? Let me go out there and get you a toilet. I ought to get this. I ought to get me a. Run out there and see if I'm a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Bring back in. That's the way most of you are looking. Right through a little tiny roll of toilet paper. Or you seeing the big picture. You got your eyes open and say, wow. Wow! I realize what it's all about. Get me a little roll. There's some used rolls in there. Don't bring me one of those gigantic rolls. Bring me one of those little teeny rolls about all gone. My wife threw them away. My wife threw them away. I told you, what did I tell you yesterday? I said, don't throw those toilet paper rolls away. I can't see anybody. I can't. I can't see me, Ma, and Mike. I can't see Big D. I can't see Donald. I can't see. I can't see Robbie. Now I see Robbie. You know that's the way most people go through life. Yeah. They only see just a little. Hey, they only see just a little teeny tiny bit through there. I can see Cliff, but I can't see Miss Shirley. I can see Shirley, but I can't see her brother. You know why? Because we've got a narrow field of vision. That's right. That's right. And that's the way most people are going through life. Yeah. All they see is right there, Ed. How are you, buddy? Fine. Ed got saved. Let me get on Ed a little bit. I've given Ed a break. Let me get back on Ed. Ed came last Easter. Been over a year now. He was a CEO. You know what a CEO is? Christmas and Easter only. <laughs> Never a two-timer. And he came Easter Sunday morning and God rattled his cage. Amen. And come the next Sunday, he said, I'm going back to church. And I'll issue just about pat a heart attack and died. He ain't never gone back two times in a row. And he said, I'm going back. Ed got saved right out yonder on the parking lot. Amen. Gave his heart to the Lord. Alicia got saved right out yonder on the parking lot. Here's a young man got saved. His mother died at Christmas a couple years ago. Got saved at the funeral home. There's a man that got saved at a business meeting a couple years ago. God is in the saving Amen. business. Amen. You know what the problem is? You're going through life and all you're seeing is that little old thing, that t tunnel vision. Right. Tunnel vision. I, can't, I, don't, I don't see anything over there and I don't see anything over there. I just see what's right in front of me. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Oh, foot. Woo! You ought to get rid of that thing and you ought to open your eyes up and you ought to say, hey, Satan, you have blinded me long enough. I am tired of seeing the little picture. Thank God I'm going to live for Jesus and see the big picture and give my heart to Jesus. Amen. 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 Hey. He's coming back. Amen. That's only a part of the story. Right. Thank God he died on the cross to pay for my sin debt that I couldn't pay. I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed. I've been bought back. Thank God that wasn't the end of the story. If it was, that'd be all there was to it. Three days later, on the third day, guess what? They went to the tomb to look for him and they said, he's not here. Right. And the angel said, he is risen as he said. That's not the end of the story. Every prophecy in, hey, let me get the Bible out and hold it up for you so you'll know. Every word in this Bible has come to pass. Amen. What hasn't come to pass will come to pass. Every prophecy in this Old Testament about Jesus has been fulfilled and coming to pass. And I'm going to tell you, if all those things have come to pass, Kevin, i got to believe that the rest of them are going to happen too. He's coming back. Yes. And I'm going to tell you what, i tell you what, it's going to be a bad time if you ain't ready to meet him. Right. Or if you have to leave out of here and you're not ready to meet him. 
You don't have to be old to die. Am I right? You don't have to be sick to die. Am I right? Man, listen, you, you, when the time comes, you've got an appointment somewhere with death. There'd be people all over the world today that would come to an altar and get saved if they had the chance. If they knew, hey, Travis, if they knew that this would be the week, I'm going to leave out of here and meet my Savior or meet Jesus. I tell you what, I don't want to meet him unsaved. Amen? Hosanna. I'm praying. You know what I'm praying? I'm praying like John. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Jesus said, Surely I come quickly. And John said, Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Yes. Can you say that today? Yes. Now, if you ain't saved, you can't say that. Right. You'd be crazy to say that. Because right. yeah. the last person you'd want to see would be the Lord Jesus. Yeah. But if you're saved... Life's been good to me. Life's been good to me. Been married almost 45 years to this beautiful lady. Never really been without much. Had some hard times and some trouble. But you know what? The good times have far outweighed that. Here I'm 60 some years old. Starting a new adventure. Starting a new church. Starting all over again. Freedom Baptist Church. We're getting ready to restart again. Next Sunday going to be like it's going to be like a resurrection Amen. for Freedom Baptist Church to start again. But I want to tell you, hey, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God that I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Bow your head. I'm going to pray in just a minute, but I want to ask you a question. How many to be honest? I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to call you by name. I'm not going to come to you. Wouldn't do that for anything. But I want to ask you a question. How many people sit in here can raise their hand up, not say anything, but by that they'd be saying, "Preacher, I know I've been saved by Jesus Christ." Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Several hands didn't go up. How many people would be honest? Here's another step. I'm not going to come to you. not going to embarrass you. How many people would be honest? Just slip their hand up. You don't have to do anything, but just acknowledge. Preacher, I've never been saved. But boy, I tell you what, I sure need to be. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Well, thank God that people have the courage and the honesty to say, hey, I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to meet Jesus. I need to be saved. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to pray. And if you really want to be saved and know Jesus, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about being a church member. I'm talking about getting you a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Where you know you're saved and on your way to heaven. I'm going to pray this prayer, and I want you to listen to me. If you want to be saved, just say it something like this. As I pray, you pray this in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I cannot save myself. But today, Palm Sunday, I'm asking you to save me. I believe that you lived. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose from the dead. And I believe you're coming back. And today, the best I know how, I'm asking Jesus to save me. Maybe you're here today and you're backslidden. You're not where you ought to be. I tell you, there's a way to fix that. There's a remedy for that. Bump an old-fashioned altar up here and just get Jesus back where you need to be in your life. Amen. Amen. Meemaw, you ready to sing? Let's stand. Everybody stand. Here's the most important part for you. If you want to be saved, I'm going to challenge you to do something that's going to be very difficult. 
I'm going to ask you to step out, come down, and shake my hand, and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer, or I want to pray that prayer, and I want to be saved. Travis, come here. Come here. I want you to show them how easy it is. Here's a man big enough to eat hay. Show them how easy it is. Come right down here and shake my hand. Buddy, God bless you. I love you, buddy. Whoa, I love this guy right here. Thank God the people, young people, still have a desire to want to be saved before it's too late. I'm going to ask you, would you do that while we sing? While we sing, God bless you. Look at my buddy coming here. Look at my buddy coming here. God bless you, buddy. God bless you, buddy. You've never been saved. You want to be a son. Without him, my wife told me I could do nothing. So I've never been saved, but I want to be. Without him, I'd sure How about it? How about it? Somebody else? Without him, I would be drifting. How about it? Like a ship with. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him Maybe you didn't raise your today? Hand. You Maybe can say, turn I need to be saved. him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Would you make that step today? Him, How about it? How lost while the Lord is knocking at your heart and you know Without you need to be saved. Him, I would be dying. Without Him, I'd be enslaved. Without Him, life would be hopeless. But with Jesus, thank God. How about it? You need to make that trip today. Come on down. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without You can turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Right here. Travis, did you accept Jesus today in your heart? Travis. Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Got Travis on the brain. Brian, did you accept Jesus in yes, your heart today? Yes, sir, I did. Amen. <laughs> We've been after him for a while, haven't we? A little while now. <laughs> and uh, he told me, so I'm coming. I'll be there Sunday. And man, thank you so much, buddy. Yes, sir. Best thing you ever done. Again, such a polite, wonderful, sweet young man. That man, I tell you what, hey, you boss right here too, buddy. Amen. Your boss right here standing. Man, I tell you what, thank you for doing that. Thank you. God bless you. You got anything you want to say? No, no, thank you, though. (laughs) Proud of you, buddy. Hey, listen, if you're here this morning, you're not saved, don't go home and be lost. Get saved. You can get saved before you go home. Amen. So, uh, man, thank you for being here. Thank all the visitors. I hope you come back. Man, we're getting ready to kick in for next Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And man, I tell you what, invite somebody, tell them, tell them to come out and be with us, and uh, let's just pray through the week Amen. that we'll have a good time. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You going to pray? Okay. Oh, what a service. Amen. You know, I'm going to miss this. I tell you what, I don't know if I want to go back to Missouri or not. But <laughs> I, I've got a good church back home, but it don't measure up to this. Uh, uh, but anyway, 
Let's bow our heads. God, thank you for another message, a great message. Lord, thank you for our pastor. Lord, he needs all the help he can get, and uh, he needs our prayers, Lord. So let's help us remember to support him with our prayers daily, Lord. We ask you, we thank you for this one that's, that's come to be uh, a soldier for you today. Lord, we pray that you would lead him and, and care for him and nurture him in the ways that he would have to go. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for these people. Thank you for your many blessings of life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Singing my song 